So music theory is one of those things that uh, can seem daunting to a lot of people um, off the bat. And I remember when I was younger, I was like, how, the, what the hell, you know, how am I going to remember all this stuff and how am I even going to understand it? Um, but real early on, I, I saw some information that really helped um, my understanding of theory. And I'm going to share some of that uh, today and hopefully those of you out there in uh, YouTube land can uh, use what I'm going to show you and kind of figure out the way I did. So music theory in a nutshell is 12 notes, Western music at least. Obviously, uh, the way that notes are subdivided in different cultures is different. But what we hear um, in all the styles of music we typically listen to in Western culture is based on the 12 notes that... Um, We'll cover today. Um, there's seven letters, A through G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There are five notes in between that are your sharps and flats. So that's 12. And that's why you have two dots or some fancy inlay at the 12th fret. It's musically significant. Each string, no matter what it's tuned to, will start over at that fret. So once you learn you know, one string, you can keep going. Every 12 frets will be the same exact pattern on that string, okay? Each string has its own pattern. If you tune it different, the, the pattern of notes changes. If you stick to your, your natural notes and avoid your sharps and flats. It's like, it's really a little harder for string instrument players because tunings change and you know, you need to memorize where your notes are located and then apply them as you play. Like if you sit down at a piano and you play all the white keys, that's C major slash A minor. That's all the naturals. Black keys are sharps and flats. We have to know as guitar players where they're located on the string. So it takes a little practice and, uh, you know, it gets, gets pretty easy as you get used to it. Okay. What I did was I started on the letter A because... That's where the alphabet starts. Why make it hard? You know, start in a simple place. So we're going to play everything on the fifth string today. We're going to play A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and go back to A. I'm going to show you where those notes are located. I'll give you the number of the fret and play them, okay? So A is the open string. Zero. B is what's called a whole step away. Two frets. We skip the first fret, go right to the second. That's B. Zero, two, A, B. C is what's called a half step away, right next to B. So three is C, zero, two, three, A, B, C. And we're gonna go to D, we're gonna jump up a whole step. So we're gonna go to the fifth fret on the A string for D, A, B, C, D, zero, two, three, five. Okay, moving on. E is another whole step. So from five, we're gonna go to seven, zero, two, three, five, seven, A, B, C, D, E. Now, we're back to E. We're going to get to a, a half step here for F. So F is an 8. So 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8. A, B, C, D, E, F. There's another half step. So two instances so far where we have half steps. 2 and 3, B and C, and 7 and 8, E and F. Those notes, remember those. Those two instances, those are your exceptions. Everything else is a whole step apart. And if you remember that, it simplifies things in a big way. Okay, zero, two, three, five, seven, eight. A, B, C, D, E, F. A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, G is gonna be a whole step from F. Right, so we're at 10 for G. Zero, two, three, five, seven, eight, ten. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Now, remember what I said about the 12th fret being significant? We're going to jump up to the 12th fret. We're going to skip the 11th because the 12th is our octave. That's A. That's where everything starts over. A. So you have 0, 2, 3, 5, 7, 8, 10, 12. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Or a one octave A minor scale. Or the sixth mode of C major, which we'll talk about later. Okay? So like I said earlier... Uh, once you learn that pattern and apply it, it keeps going. So we're at 12. We need a whole step. Two frets. B, 14. Another half step for C. 
15, you know, you can keep going up the neck and the pattern would continue. If you have 144 frets, however many frets you had, it doesn't matter. It could be miles long. Every 12 frets, the pattern remains the same if you stick to those notes. The sharps and flats in between, they have a couple different names. It depends on how you look at it and where you start and what kind of, you know, how you want to repeat your notes or what you want to name them. For instance, uh, between, um, let's see, D and E. Okay, we've got this note at the sixth fret. This note is either called D sharp, this note raised, D sharp, was called E flat, this note taken down, E flat. Same note. When I was writing these out when I was younger, I would put like a, a slash and then give them both names. And I'll name them whatever I feel like at the time. Um, if I'm playing a scale and I'm adding one of these, I'll take whatever the previous letter is and then go to the next letter and call it what it is altered. Like say if you play like this scale here. Like that's like A, B, C, D, E, F. And then instead of playing G, I play G sharp because I'm going to go to A again. You know, I don't want to, you know, use the same letter name twice in a row if I don't have to. Okay. But what I showed you today is just the A minor scale, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I think it was Joe Satriani years ago that had some lessons on, you know, single string scales. You can play like your tapping ideas based on. Based on the scale, you know, and if you follow those notes, you'll always sound pretty good. If you're in that key, change keys, play those notes, you might sound bad. So then you have to learn how to convert what you're playing into other keys. And it's simply a matter of moving everything and visualizing that nut moving up the neck and so on, you know. Now each string has a different starting point as far as where it's at in the alphabet because we tune it different. If we start on E, you know, my next note would be F, so I'd use the half step right out of the gate and play the first fret. And then G would be a whole step away, so I'd go up to three, zero, one, three, and keep on going that way. So I'd go a whole step to A, whole step to B, half step to C. Remember B, C, E, F. Those are the keys. If you remember those, it's so easy to understand theory and really get down uh, your A minor slash C major scale because that's going to get you a lot of uh, a lot of stuff played too. A lot of things are played in those keys because they're they're so universal, you know. Um, you play it across the neck, you can play it like uh, this if you play it up the string. If you find an A on the E string and you want to do like a little pattern, just play three per string. Same thing. Okay, so understanding where your notes are located and, and uh, those relationships will help you understand theory and get places in a big way.